Now let's start building the products detail screen. For that, I have already write its code and I will explain it in details. So as you can see, first of all, it's a constitute of a stack and another widget, a scrollable widget. And in here we are showing the suggested products. And at the bottom, the user can add to cart or buy it now or add to favorite. And on the top, there is an upper and in here two icon buttons. So first of all, it's a stateful widget and I add the route name for it and I initialize it in the main Dart file in here. And I wrap this container in here by an inkwell and I add the function navigation function for it. So once the user press on any item in here, it will take him to the products detail screen. So as I said before, it's a stack and the first uh, widget will be the this image widget. So I initialized a container for it. I gave it the full width and a height of media query height times 0 0.45 and I gave it the uh, foreground so if I remove it it appear like this but I prefer to keep it it also work in the dark mode and below of this image now we initialize the this widget this scrollable widget so I wrap uh, this column by a single child scroll view and first widgets will be the this icons widget so I initialize a row and I add a main access element for it and put it to the end so the first button is an inkwell wrapped by a material to make that splash color appear I gave it border radius of 30 and non function and same for the share icon and below it we initialize another container that contain those widgets and I gave it a color of scaffold background color because if I remove it it will take a transparent color and it will, will appear like this for sure if we keep the color it will be better Inside of this container, I initialize a column that will contain those widgets. So first of all, I initialized a text for this title and I gave it max line of 2 and I gave it style uh, and set the font size to 28 and give it font weight of W600. I added some margin between both widgets by adding this size box. And I initialize this text widget for the price. I am using the dark theme to change the color for it. So if it's dark, I'm using the disabled color. And if not, I am using the subtitle color. I added font weight for it and put it to bold. And the font size, I prefer to choose 21. I added a sized box between this widget and I added a divider in here wrapped by padding as you can see the code in here and the padding is symmetric only from the right side and the left side I give it thickness of 1 and height of 1 and gray color for the description I initialized a text wrapped by padding also and I'm using the dark theme just like we did before to change the color for it. Also to add some margin between the divider and the text we added a size box in here and another divider in here. Now for this widget because we will be using it many times I prefer to make it as dynamic widget so let's see what inside of it. It takes three arguments first one the boolean to check which theme are we using second one the title and the info. The title is for the brand for example and the info for the brand name. First of all I wrap 
by a padding and we added our row for this padding as a child and put the main axis alignment to the start it's by default to the start also it doesn't matter because it's inside of the column and for the children first one is a text and the second one also is a text the first one for this brand so I give it the title and the second one for the info I gave it to different uh, style the so first one I gave it just a static color of uh, text selection color and the second one is dynamic color uh, depending on the theme state so as we did before for the description and for the price color so below of this widget we have the review widget so as you can see I used the widget four times the first one for the brands and the second one for the quantities for example etc between it and between the diffuse widget I added a margin of 15 and a divider this divider in here for the reviews I give it a background color for this container so this color if I change it it will take the scaffold background color but I prefer to keep it like this and I give it a width of infinity and we don't have to give it a height because it will take the height of these items and I initialized inside of this container a column it contained two texts the first one for the this text and the second one for this text and I also did some styling for it as we did before for the second one also we are using the seam state to change the color for it below of it I added some margin to look nicer of 70 and at the bottom I added the divider that it appear in here if I remove this for example doesn't look nicer so I will just keep it below of it now there is the suggested products and once the user press on it it will take him to the product detail screen also uh, I used uh, for this the feed the products design the widget that we are using it inside of the feeds and I changed the scroll direction for it to be horizontal in here and I, I gave it a static count of 7 and we need to wrap it by a height and I gave it height of 300 so that it didn't make any error if I remove this for example it will make an error and it will not appear anymore if I go out and enter as you can see it doesn't appear anymore for sure we can use the media query for it but it's fine like this now for the up bar to keep appearing while scrolling I wrap it by a positioned argument to be on the top and I give it top argument of 0, left of 0 and right of 0 and I give it a center title and name details in here and it takes two different actions button this icons button for the actions and I give it the function so once the user press on it it will take him to the wishlist screen and same for the cart icon it will take him to the cart screen so it's just like this what's left in this screen is to add these icons so here the code for it for that we need to an alignment widget to align them to the bottom of the screen so if I remove this widget for example it says and if I save it as you can see it move up to the start of the screen not that what we want so I will keep it just like this and you can choose for example bottom any bottom that you prefer it it doesn't matter because it fits the whole width so the first child of it will be the auto card bottom I wrap it by an expanded and I give it flex of 3 so that's why it takes the most uh, width 
and I give it, uh, I wrap it by a container and give it a height of 50. So this bottom is constitute of a raised bottom. And I give it a shape of no border side. And as a child, I give it a text. This a two card text and it's taken the default uh, color of the theme. So it will be black in here once we turn it to dark theme. And as a background, I give it this color, the red accent to shade 400. For the second one, I gave it flex of tools. That's why it takes less width of the add to cart button. And it's the same code for uh, for both of them. And here I initialize the text. But beside of it, to its right, I added a new icon. That's why we need a row in here. This payment icon in here. And to add some margin between them, I added the slide box. And the last bottom is the this hard bottom. So it takes the small width because I get, because I gave it only flex of one. And I wrap it by a container and gave it a dynamic color depending on the theme state. And as the other, I gave it a height of 50. And it's an inkwell button, not like those raised bottom. So it has a different code and I gave it a splash color of the favorite color. So once the user press on it, this red color will appear. And once the user keep pressing on it, the hideout color will appear. For that, you can ch just change it from the theme data. So I will just remove it for now. Oh, I'm sorry, I should remove this, the highlight color, not hover color. So if I press on it now, the red color will appear. And as a child, I give it a center that takes an icon child, the this heart that I have already initialized it in my app icons class. And I give it a color of white. That's it for this tutorial. And the next tutorial, we will start making our data dynamic. And we are going to create a model class for the product. So stay tuned and see you on the next video.